this is Logan, and today we're going to be reading The Whipping Boy. Uh, we're on chapter 15, so uh, let's get reading. The soldiers had passed by, following the river. Jimmy ventured toward the city. Prince Brad strode along beside him. Okay. As soon as... I as soon as I can, I aim to give you the slip, Jimmy Ryan. You'll be on your own, the prince said nothing. The tide was low, and they traveled out of oh, the grassy embankment it, in the distance against the billowing white clouds stood a jack straw jumbled of ship's mast. Can you find? Can you fend for yourself, for your own self? Can't you? Jimmy asked suddenly. Of course I can. Answered Prince. Answered the Prince in a stinging voice. I don't need flocks of servants to fetch. To fetch and carry for me. It's settled then. Settled. Skipped up. S skip off any time you like. With that. With the tide out. The wide mud. Flat, flat lay exposed. From ha long habit. Jimmy kept his eyes peeled for treasure. Sandpipers scattered like mice before him. Hold on, I need to get some chat. He spotted a barrel's stave and pounced upon it. Trash, remarked the prince. What are you doing? Mudlarking. What? I've got to eat, don't I? If I can't and collect enough driftwood, I can sell it at, I can sell it as Firewood. Mm, I don't think this is good. The prince shrugged and walked on ahead. Jimmy gazed after him for a moment. What did a prince know about living off the streets? His meals had always appeared on china plates and silver trays as if by magic. Left to, left to himself, he'd starve. It's not my worry, Jimmy muttered. What? You, that's what, what? If you, if you get hungry enough, you'll scramble back to the castle. And the, pl the prince glared back at Jimmy and then snooped down. The prince glared back at Jimmy and stooped down to retrieve the broken leg of a chair from the mud. Is this worth anything? Jimmy nodded. Jimmy nodded. Before long, the two of them had, it, had collected three more barrel staves and the, and the back of the chair. And then Jimmy found something even more valuable. Valuable to him, a bent, a bent and battered bird, bird cage. He could go into business with that. Straightened out, he he would hold rats. They rounded a bend, and crack of a whip sound in the air like a firecracker. Jimmy crawled up and embanked for a look. A weary old coach was miring a mud hole on the road. The coachman lo looked just as old as and rickety. Looking just as old as Rickety and rickety. Held the reins reins of his 
to horse team and cracked his whip in the air again. Poor gents, be good lads. It's it's me own fault, not leading you around this bog. My say what it was is it old tarts? Jimmy watched for another moment as the horses tried to pull the coach free. The coach was in, enabled blue with a yellow lettering painted on the door panel. Captain Perry Nips, Hot Potato Man. As you can see, it's right there. Um, so we, oh. Jimmy crawled over the embankment to a ride to the city would suit him fine. Sir, would you take a passenger? On a passenger, here. Let me let me set these bail staves under the wheels. Don't mind if you do," said Captain Nips. I'm late for the fare as it is. Jimmy advised himself, laying a firm track for the wheels. Prince Brat watched from the edge of the embankment. You must. Be carrying a heavy load, Jimmy cried out. Try, try again, Captain. The old man cr cracked his whip. The horses strained, and the coach rolled up out of the bog. Hop in, lad. Jimmy opened the door and saw that the coach was heavy, heavily loaded with raw potatoes and a huge iron kettle. Jimmy's settled him as he could the coach lured, lurched the coach lurched forward at last jimmy thought you're free at the print but he resisted it a backward glance prince brat was prince brat was standing in the center of the road he dropped his load with a driftwood and merely, merely gazed at the re receding coach. Jimmy straightened, straightened, straight, straightened, yeah, and folded his arms. The prince wasn't his lookout any longer. But he'd stood, but he'd, but he'd stood there like a wounded bird. Last him, a prince hat, and a cock, a cockeyed nation, notion, whatever. How to fend for himself? Stop, Captain! Jimmy shouted. We left me friend behind. The hot potato man pulled up on the reins. Jimmy leaned out the window. With an arm, he motioned Prince Brett to come along. For an instant, Jimmy thought he saw a smile flash across the prince's face. But it had vanished by the time the heir to the throne joined him inside the coach. So what the heir to the throne means, sorry, is basically just the next person in line to be the king, like a prince is the heir to the throne. They rode in silence. Jimmy wondered what had possessed him to refer to Prince Brant as his friend. Friend? Cal, Cal's would get give beer first. <laughs> then minutes later the coach rocked to a sudden halt. Stand we deliver came a shout. A pair of highwaymen were training pistols on Captain Nip. Jimmy hardly he had to peer out. The voice was familiar. It was Hold Your Nose Billy and Cutwater. 
So that's the end of this chapter. I hope you enjoy, and make sure you subscribe. Um, this will be a good series, and um, I love doing this. It was an idea, and one sec. So yeah, so yeah, that will be it. Bye.